I don't even know if I should tell you this. It's another beautiful desert night and another night of messing around with my lights. You see that, um, it looks like a star, really bright up there next to the moon. That's actually the planet Venus. Most planets don't shine that bright. And I mean, the truth is planets are not stars, right? So they don't shine. They just reflect the light of the stars around them. So Venus is a really reflective planet. That's why you can see it so well in the night sky, you know, because it reflects more of the light of the stars around it. Not because it shines, because planets don't shine. Interesting fact. So this is my last night here in Ehrenberg. It's my last night in Arizona. I'm not going to Phoenix, I'm going to California. So there's the little update on Buster the dog. It is actually Tuesday night right now. The rescue lady said she was gonna call me on Tuesday, but she did not call me on Tuesday, which was today. She didn't call me, I called her. She didn't return my call. I called her again, she didn't return my call again. I reached out on Facebook, she didn't respond. Okay, maybe she's just busy, but it doesn't seem like it's just that, right? What can I say? They don't want me, they don't want me. I get the message, I'm not going to Phoenix. I'm gonna go to California to see my friends. She and I already said our goodbyes, but chances are I'll be seeing her again because when I come back through on my way back east, might as well stop here in Ehrenberg because I gotta sleep somewhere. is the sound I needed to hear. We're on the washboard crazy rocky road out of Scootaloosa, headed to, headed into Ehrenberg first of all, and then from there I'm heading into California. But I'm not taking the 10, which would be really easy because the 10's right here. Um, I am taking the uh, 78, State Road 78, and then the 8, because I'm coming in through San Diego. And the reason I'm going that way is because I have to pick up a package in San Diego. The thing about all this government land that you can go and camp out on and all that, it's lovely. And it's great that the government lets you do that. It's great there's a place in America where you can do that. But the downside, of course, is that they don't maintain it really at all. So, kind of on your own about that. And that's why the road is so cray cray. You know? I like this whole, like, I like the, um, the community. I don't think I would like to live in just sand all the time, though. I need some trees from time to time. Um, so, you know, whatever issues I have with New England, they got trees. And plenty of them. I'm paranoid about my brakes because of that crazy mountain range I went through before, but now that my brakes are just fixed, I don't think I need to be worried about it, really. That is what you call dramatic foreshadowing, okay? Dramatic foreshadowing in a story is when somebody says something that's going to become important later. Like, for example, someone says, oh, you know, Maybe we shouldn't have built the elevator with all those used parts. And then later in the movie, the elevator crashes. It's that kind of thing. So listen again and make sure you remember this. I'm paranoid about my brakes because of that crazy mountain range I went through before, but now that my brakes were just fixed, I don't think I need to be worried about it really. So I'm driving along and everything's fine, everything's great, and then 
gets a little hard to accelerate, like especially on hills. And that happens every now and then because, you know, it's a 30-year-old truck, right? So sometimes it just doesn't like the grade or whatever. But not long after that, I start to smell this smell. It's like, it's familiar, but I can't place exactly what it is. Like, it's not something I smell often, but it's something I, I've smelled before. And then I start to see smoke. Okay, so once I see the smoke, I know I gotta pull over and I'm thinking it's the radiator, except this doesn't smell like the radiator, not at all. So I pull off the road, pull in here, open up the hood. I expect that I'm gonna see like smoke billowing out, but I open the hood and nothing comes out. There's no smoke coming out of there. That's because the smoke is coming out from behind the tire, the wheel, whatever you wanna call it. It's coming out from there, which means it's brakes. And then I realized that's what the smell is. The smell is burning brakes. I knew the smell wasn't radiator and I, was, I knew I knew the smell, but I couldn't think of what it was. It's brakes, the brakes are burning up. And um, yeah, it's probably a stuck caliper. I don't know how to fix that. So I'm gonna get, have to call and try to get a mechanic here. Isn't this Josh's extension? Well, can I leave my voicemail? So he's not in today at all. I called Josh over at Fix, you know, the, the place that does the mobile mechanic, the guy that got me the um, mechanic in both Phoenix and uh, Columbus, Ohio. I called that guy, but he's not in today. And so I talked to another guy in that office and he couldn't find anybody. So, so I looked online, it took me a while to figure out where I even am, but I'm in El Centro, California. So once I knew that I looked online and I, found a Pep Boys. I called Pep Boys and they said they can't do it because they can't fit the bus. But they recommended this place right up the street. So I'm going to let the brakes cool off and then I'm going to drive over there because it's still drivable. You know, it's not like I can't drive it. Brakes are just burning up. That's all. What can I say? The adventures of life on the road. Well, I not only made it to Daniel's Tire, I'm going to spend the night at Daniel's Tire. Because they're not going to get the parts until tomorrow, so they can't do the work till tomorrow. I brought the bus in, and they took it in the shop, and I went in the front because they have Wi-Fi up there. So I was hanging out up there, and then after a little while, the mechanic came in from the shop, and he handed something to the guy behind the counter. He just handed him this thing and walked away. Like, they didn't even have any conversation about it. Just handed it to him, and a second later, he says look, this came off your brakes. And he shows me the thing. And it's like about the length of a banana and a little bit of a curve to it like that, but flat, like more like a tongue. And it's black and it looks like it's made out of rubber, but I didn't touch it, so I can't say for sure. Um, okay, none of that sounds very good. Black rubber tongue, I didn't touch it. Okay, anyway, <laughs> moving on. Um, so he says, look, this came off your brakes. And I say, wow, that came off my front brakes? And he says, no, this came off your rear brakes. Okay, so why are my front brakes smoking? He says that it's because my rear brakes are so shot that they're not doing any work. And because of that, the front brakes are having to do extra work and that's why they're smoking. Okay, I don't know anything about brakes. So it's not like I can really argue this or I, it just, something about it just doesn't sound right to me. But like I said, I don't know anything about brakes. What I should have done See, the thing about me is I always want everyone to be happy, and I never want anyone to think that I don't trust them. Even if I don't trust them. What I should have done is I should have taken that black rubber tongue and uh, kept it, and I should have had them show me the broken brakes so that I could um, see for myself. Because then I would have maybe felt a little more sure about this. It's not like I would have looked at it and known even what I was looking at, but at least I would have felt like I did my due diligence, you know, because the estimate's really high. It's a lot of money and I don't really have a choice. That's the bottom line because I'm here. They took the wheel off and the axle off and the brakes, you know, are broken apparently. So it's not like I could get in the bus and drive anywhere else. So I got to do this here. And so here I am waiting until the morning to get parts. I'm not going to be the first person that ever slept in this parking lot because they do RV repairs here. So they said a few people more than a few probably have slept in their vehicles waiting for parts. Now I'm one of them. Uh, I'm going to go to bed pretty early, I think, because I want to get up really early. I want to get over to McDonald's it's right across the street and get my, my muffin and my coffee before they even open over here. And they open at 7 because I just want to get in, get in, get out, get her done and get back on the road. So, good night.
I don't even know if I should tell you this. I don't, I don't like to, like, I'm not here to make anybody scared. You know, my job, the way I see it is to say, hey, don't be scared, you know, and um, show you, the reason I show you everything that happens is because I want you to feel like you can handle anything. You know, I want you to see that if I can handle anything, you can handle anything. And I just don't know if I should even tell you this. something something happens you know and okay somebody broke in somebody broke into the bus while I was in here sleeping and I thought like hey why even talk about it because you know what's done is done and why make people afraid but you know I've been I'm pretty honest about what happens you know and I don't feel like like, I feel like that's part of it. You know, the things that happen are part of it, you know, and how you handle them is part of it. What happened tonight didn't have to happen, you know. I am responsible for myself. I take care of myself. There's nobody following me around taking care of me out here, okay? That's what solo female traveler means. Solo. I'm alone. There's nobody taking care of me, so I have to take care of myself. And tonight, I did not take good care of myself. And I'm not saying that's a victim blame. I'm saying that because that's reality you know and because I need to remember who it is that takes care of me so what happened is this back door it has a padlock that goes on it I don't always use it because I store so much stuff there that the door is usually pretty wedged. It has this really big arm that has to swing and if the arm doesn't have clearance, you can't open the door. But so when I started this trip, I tried to put the padlock on, you know, the first time I slept somewhere that I wasn't really familiar with. And um, I discovered that the hasp was really rusted and so the padlock wouldn't go on. So I didn't worry about it. I just jammed my stuff against the door and I checked the handle to make sure it was locked and you know, it, it didn't open at all, so everything was cool. But then I camped, and so I took everything out. You know, I set up my table. My tabletop is back there and all that. I set up my table. I used all the stuff that's back there, so I didn't, um, you know, I, I camped. And when it was over, I crammed everything back in there, and I just assumed that I crammed it back in the exact same way that it was and that the door was jammed. So I'm in here sleeping. All that's between the door and me is a bunch of like tabletop and some other crap and a curtain. And, and then I feel just some kind of movement, but you know, that could be the wind, who knows? And then boom, all of a sudden that arm goes up, right? And the way I am, like if you invade my space, I don't go to scared, I go to angry, right? So I'm angry. The thing goes up and I realize what's happening and I whip open that curtain and there's a guy standing there, you know? and I always said, get the f out of here right now. And he goes, okay. Like he's just some tweaker, right? He wasn't expecting anybody to be in here. He probably pissed his pants. And so he says, okay. And he starts to run away, but then he stops because something fell out when the door opened and he picks up the thing that fell out and he starts to run with it. And as he's running away, I realize he's got my yoga mat. Like that's what he stole. That's what he's got under his arm, my yoga mat. So I got broken into. And my yoga mat got stolen. So, you know, big, you know, roller coaster of emotion. I go from furious to uh, laughing, you know, that this guy stole my yoga mat and that's all he got. And then all of a sudden I'm crying, you know, and I had a good cry because I started thinking about, like, the things that could have happened, you know. Yeah, the bottom line is they didn't happen. I'm lucky that it was just a tweaker and I'm lucky it was just my yoga mat. But really, I mean, I didn't take care of myself tonight. You know, all I had to do was check that handle. I'm, I'm in El Centro, California. I know nothing about El Centro, California. So why am I not checking my locks? You know, I mean, I'm not, again, I'm not saying this to beat myself up. I'm saying this because I am responsible for taking care of myself. You know, I mean, 
that guy stole my yoga mat, but I am not going to let him steal my joy. You know, I, I thrive out here. I love being out here, but I got to be careful. You know, we all got to be careful. I, I want to be honest with you guys. I really do. I just don't want, I don't want to be the one who scares you away if this is your dream, you know? I don't want to be that person, you know? I don't want to scare you because things break down. I don't want to scare you because it gets cold. I don't want to scare you because some tweaker breaks in, you know? I'm not going to say there's nothing to be afraid of because there's plenty to be afraid of, but that doesn't mean you don't do it. Okay. I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to sleep. Let's see how that goes. I got two hours before the tire store opens, so I'm gonna try to sleep a little bit more. The door's very well locked now, so good night. Take care of yourself, okay? Okay, breaks are done. I'm back on my way. Not thrilled with this place, to be totally honest with you, because I think they ripped me off. Um, when I went up to pay, I mean, I thought the price was pretty high. Um, and it's funny how it just came down suddenly, you know, like as if it was doing me a favor. It didn't come down that much, but it came down a little. And what happened in between uh, the first estimate and the price coming down was um, I took the estimate and I started looking at prices of the parts that they were getting. Just looking them up on Rock Auto because it's the easiest place. They always have everything. And um, when I went up to pay just now, there was a note notepad there. And somebody had written on it, she's looking up prices on rockauto.com. And there was a list of prices. And they were a hell of a lot less than what they charged me. So, yeah. You know, one of the things that drives me nuts is all the people out there that want to take advantage of somebody who doesn't know what the f they're doing with a bus and my learning curve has been steep but I have climbed that hill so you know I don't know how to do my own brakes no I don't so you're gonna charge me a fortune as a result I guess so I guess that's how it works okay I'm hitting the road now The other one, wherever it is. That one, that's just one I just thought you might like watching. I don't know. Whichever one you watch, I'm gonna meet you there because where else am I gonna go? I'm stuck in this thing. It's better than ever.